Okay, Abba. So, uh, first of all, Sarba Tevis today. Yeah, it's Tenth of Tevis. It's tenth one of, of uh, what is it? Defi- we have six fast days in the course of the year. I don't even know. Right? Well, is it? that's easy to figure out. Uh, you have uh, Tisha B'Av and Yom Kippur. Tom Gedalia. Yeah, Tom Three. Gedalia. You have Sarba Tevis. Joseph uh, Thomas. Tainus Esther, Shavas Thomas. Six. six. Oh, wow. So you have six days where we fast. This is one of the, they call lighter fasts. Also, yeah. there's also a seventh, like the day after Pesach when you feel nasty. It's a, we should oh, make that a fast. That, that's voluntary. <laughs> is people, it? Uh, they have to pay if there are still people on a roll. You know, yeah. uh, I've met people at Pesach programs over the years, a lot of years, Baruch Hashem, that bring two wardrobes to Pesach. Really? They, they go one size for the first days, and they're a different size for the second days. Really? So... <laughs> So, I mean, we're getting off on a, another one of those tangents, but... Uh, yeah, that's, it's interesting. A, it's we, a tenth of <laughs> Tavis. It's the, the beginning of the siege of Yerushalayim. Yeah. And uh, believe, that's why it's not an accident why uh, public uh, a security minister, Itamar ben Gvir in Israel, uh, went up to the uh, Harabayas today. Brings us to our first story of the day. Because, is... you know, he has a right to go there if he wants to. Now, at the same time, it's important to note he was... Criticized by the Sephardic chief rabbi, yeah, Rabbi uh, Yosef, uh, and rightfully so. And uh, listen, you know, it's not it's not out of line with the statement that you made about disagreeing civilly, you know, in a civilized way. There was a time in this country, the United States of America, when you were able to. When Ronald Reagan was president, there was a Democrat, Tip O'Neill, who was the speaker. And they worked things out. They had different opinions. They had different agendas. They had different visions for what America needs. And they sat down in a room and they worked out a compromise. And the country moved forward in that way in a civilized manner. But I I don't even remember. Like it's it's your generation. I mean, your young guys. Your generation seems to have have lost that. They've lost that. Yeah. Like the righteous brothers say, you, you lost that loving feeling. Is that a song? <laughs> That's a song. You can Wanna play sing? it. You can play it. I don't no, think I will. Could, but this uh, this story, obviously, the first story we're mentioning <laughs> today from JNS.org. Defying threats, Ben Gvir visits Temple Mount without incident. Hamas had threatened to ignite the region if the visit went ahead, while the PA warned of serious consequences for everyone. Um, Our government will not surrender to threats, says Israel National Security Member Itamar Ben Gvir. So he went to the you know old city on Sarah Teves. He went right. up to the Harabayas, right. um, which was a statement. It's definitely a statement. Uh, something that I think Netanyahu a while ago uh, had alluded to how he, he wouldn't let Ben Gvir go on to the Temple Mount, right? Like he had something. Okay, now the, the difference is now when Ben when Ben Gvir went up as a private citizen. They weren't happy about it, but he's a private citizen. But now, he's now he represents the Israel government. So that's yeah. Now it's a diff- that's why the U.S. ambassador to Israel, Tom Needs, also made a statement condemning and criticizing uh, Mark Ben Gvir. Uh, ben Gvir. It's a really a nice start. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's, it's an interesting start to this government. Well, it's 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 to be expected. You know, it's a right wing. It's a right wing political right wing government. Forget about the from agenda, which you like to, to talk about. Uh, but you don't like to talk about it. No, that's that's a, that's a that's a small part of the whole thing. It's okay, much, much it's much greater. Israel and how they uh, co how it exists in the world uh, politically with a uh, a right wing philosophy uh-huh. in terms of territory. I mean, there's there's the land of Israel. Mm-hmm. The land of Israel belongs to the Jewish people, and that's the that that's the baseline. And you you could you could you could delude yourself into thinking otherwise. Secretary of State Blinken said yesterday in a message to the new government that the United States is still committed to a two-state solution. You know, that's, that's like saying that, you know, uh, the, the sky really, we hope tomorrow the sky will be on the ground and the, and the grass will be in the sky. You know, it, it, it's a night, you could say it, no one's going to stop you from saying it, but it's not going to happen. Yeah. You know, it's like a, my, one of my favorite examples is trying to get Niagara Falls to flow up. Instead of down. You ever been to Niagara Falls? I have. You see how forceful that thing is? Yeah. If you just imagine, if somehow we can get it to flow up. Be pretty cool. Instead of down. That would be an accomplishment. That's what the two-state solution is. But they can't stop themselves from, from saying those things. And by the way, I just saw that, uh, I mean, it's already the evening in Israel, that yeah. Mrs. ben Ayala ben went up to the... Arabias uh, this afternoon. Oh, interesting. Uh, earlier today, well, too. Th- this article continues, and it says that the Palestine, Palestinian Authority called this an unprecedented provocation. Uh, it said that Netanyahu bears responsibility for this ta- for this attack on Al Aqsa. Um, yeah, you know, 
I it's interesting that they call it an attack because you know what what the Israelis call an attack is obviously when someone is murdered or killed. Yeah. What what they're calling an attack is somebody going to Harabias and praying. Well, like I said, like we said before, that was condemned by the chief rabbi, Rabbi Yosef, because uh, he feels that now, as a representative of the government, he that, might. But I mean, he's he might, sending yeah. a message. He's sending a message to people. It's like like the kind of people that are on Twitter who don't think. <laughs> you know, they just they just make, making crazy comments. Yeah. If he asked them what they commented about, they wouldn't be sure. What yeah. they comment about? Ask him in three days from now what they comment about. So uh, me commented? I didn't comment. What are you talking about? So that's what they're afraid of. They're afraid that they're going to be sending a message to there's nine people, nine million Jews living in Israel, uh, or eight million Jews living in Israel. And they're afraid that people are going to get the wrong message and go out for a picnic. So uh, I surely hope. Bias. I surely hope that this doesn't really incite violence. Well, Achi, first of all, you know what? If if moving the U.S. embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem didn't incite violence. It only incited rhetoric, like from Hamas. Uh, the, the, you know, there's winning and there's losing. Yeah. Okay? And the, the the people that don't want peace, who are the Palestinians and Hamas, they're losing. And you know why they're losing? Because, look, he went up to he went up to Harabayas. If Israel moves their embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, which is the ultimate statement about the recognition of Jerusalem as Israel's capital— and Arab countries were quiet. Egypt was quiet. Jordan was quiet. Saudi Arabia was quiet. And they made they and they and and Kuwait and the United Arab Emirates and and Sudan and Morocco signed peace agreements with Israel. Yeah. And hopefully the time will be right soon with Saudi Arabia, which is the big uh, the big uh, the big fish in the whole the oh, equation. Yeah. Uh, they're going. They they want to have. They want to have peace with Israel. They don't want to have these little guys making these threatening statements. Which is just a way to extort money from the international community. Yeah, calling it an attack, playing victim. Um, That's what it comes down. It comes down to how much money can they extract from the um, a, lot, a lot of stuff that we discuss here. A lot of discuss. A lot of stuff in life comes down to the money. <laughs> Honestly, a, a whole lot. Uh, the next story that we have for today um, is something that took place last night, and um, it was it was very frightening. And I uh, oh yeah was watching the Monday night football game. Okay. Um, or in fact, I, I wasn't watching the game, and Nissen texted me, and he said, "Did this guy just, did this guy just die on the field?" Oh wow! And I, so I thought it must have been like a really bad hit, and it's just like you know, you use that term, like, "Oh god, this guy, this guy got killed." But I, I, I turn, I turn on to the, I turn on the game, and they're performing CPR on Demar Hamlin in middle of Monday Night Football, and the, you know. You have what seventy, eighty thousand people in the stands. There, you can hear a pin drop. You have many millions more watching this game, and you know the hit didn't look that bad. He's twenty four years old, probably in better shape than any of us within a hundred miles from here. <laughs> you know, like how does this happen? So you know, okay. the, you know, for, for starters, we, we we hope he has a full recovery. We, yes. You know, we we wish Plans him and him. his family his family well. Um, he was. Revived on the field, they they got a pulse back. He was not breathing on his own when they took him off the field, and they transferred him to you know one of the best hospitals, one of the better hospitals in this country in Cincinnati, where he's you know continuing to receive care. He arrived there in, in critical condition. Um, I believe he is stable yet critical now. Um, some of the doctors are, are saying what had happened was um, something very very rare, and I, I'm not going to even try to say the terminology because I won't be able to pronounce it. But he had a blunt force trauma to his chest, to the heart, at the exact moment that his heart was outputting uh, blood. And that sent his heart into VFib. VFib is, is a state in which, you know, one of the ways to get out of that, to get the heart beating again, is to use an AED. So they were able to get a defibrillator on the field. They, they shocked him. And after nine minutes performing CPR, they got his pulse back. You know, right after this happened, so the players are, are, are visibly shaken up. And there was talk in the on the on the airwaves by Joe Buck and his and his uh, co-broadcaster if they're going to continue the game, but you know it became clear that the further that this that they were waiting, the less people were thinking about football and more were thinking about this. All right, this so there life. were seventy eight thousand people in the stadium. They had to leave. They had to go home. This is the they, first quarter, right? This happened. Yeah, this happened at the beginning of the game. They 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 temporarily suspended the game. Uh, then they sent both teams to the locker rooms saw both coaches talking with each other it, ultimately they said the call needs to come from the nfl in new york what what's going to happen with this game 
It has to be made up somehow. You well, know? I'm not worried. I'm not really worried. I'm not really worried. I'm not worried about, honestly, whether the game was going to take place or not. But at the time, it took the NFL quite... I think it took the NFL quite some time to cancel the game. I believe because you know they were hoping that things are going to be okay and they were going to hear a positive report about Damar. But I think that as time went on, they knew they could not send the players out there without them knowing that their teammate is yeah. in, in stable condition. And when that became clear, they said, okay, we need to, we need to push this game off. But something I want to do mention, and I'll, I'll give you the opportunity to okay. speak, is a tweet from Lee Humphrey. He says, the next time Bill Maurer tells you that atheism is the answer or some clown sues a high school football coach for voluntarily praying on the field, show them this picture and remind them what caring, level people, loving people do when tragedy suddenly strikes. They pray. And the picture is, I'll show on the screen, uh. is what Sean McDermott, the, the coach of the Buffalo Bills do. He gathers and gather his entire team, got on a, they all, you know, they got on a knee and they started praying in the middle of the field for the safety of their player. There's no atheist in a foxhole. You know? Right, that's what Ernest Hemingway wrote uh, in one of his novels. There are no atheists in uh, in foxholes, and when someone's uh, someone has a knife at their neck and they see their uh, life or the life of a, a friend or a teammate or a close relative flash in front of them, the natural inclination is to is to pray. Yeah, and there is a history, by the way. First of all, football is a you know, it's pretty violent. A physical sport. You know, they did away with this, uh, with the runbacks, you know, from the kickoffs. And they, they, uh, they, tr- they uh, discouraged uh, it for the most yeah, part. Yeah, because uh, they got, pretty, pretty, those, those were a few hard players, hits. A few players got paralyzed from those. So they were, because, because the defense running had momentum of 75 yards. They hit a guy <laughs> with the football at the 10 or 20 yard line. That's a pretty, pretty hard this, hit. This hit, did, this hit did not look, you know, nearly as bad as most others, most other hits you see in a football game. But it, it's just one of those things that is like one in uh, one in a trillion. Like this thing doesn't happen. And, yeah, and happens, but you know, there's there a hockey player that died on the ice a few decades ago. Is there? You know, he was on Minnesota. That was before they Minnesota wore helmets. Wild. Before they, they wore helmets. It did not. Once upon a time, hockey play. Hockey was just as. Uh, ferocious as it is today on the ice, high speed, that puck, and there was, there was they didn't wear they didn't wear uh, why, why didn't, didn't wear helmets they didn't wear helmets what happened like you know, there was a time when the goalie didn't wear a face mask that just doesn't doesn't seem like sensible they didn't have any teeth the goalies <laughs> but I'm telling you they didn't have any teeth but they didn't wear ah but it. your generation wasn't too bright <laughs> <laughs> no. well we're waiting for you guys to come yeah. up with all the good all ideas of a sudden he's, like Twitter uh, <laughs> that's a good idea that was a great idea yeah no or just have I put on a helmet. How about that? I wonder who's who's the first person at the NHL that said, "Hey guys, I have I have an idea. What do you want?" And you know what? How about we you know, put yeah, on helmets? You know, just when the we're well, just about the time that a lot of the Catskill hotels were closing down, where there were the bus boxes. You know those yeah. rubber boxes that they use to clean the dishes off. Okay, yeah, and they yeah. take it into the kitchen so they can clean the silverware and the dishes for yeah. the next course. Just around that time, they started using those bus boxes in airports. <laughs> for the for TSA to put the laptops. Stuff in. Yeah, oh, the wow. guy that was making bus boxes, I call him a bus box because I was once a waiter at a bus boy. Oh, were you in the Catskills in the nineteen seventies? And you carried a bus box with all the dirty dishes. Those guys were going to go down. They were going out of business. They were finished. And then nine eleven happened. And then then the 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 shoe bomber happened. And you can't get into an airport. You're talking about the manufacturer of those of those. Gotta put all your earthly possessions into a bus box. I call it a bus box. I don't know what they call it at the airport. You gotta put your shoes in there you know in israel you don't gotta take your shoes off and you don't have to empty your pockets really uh but they because the israeli security already they already know what's in your shoe know. and what's in your pockets they, they they look in they look in your eyes they know everything about you we could probably spend the whole segment discussing that first you know when you walk into an, when you walk into a ben or you walk into jfk and that first person that greets you and says hi um have you ever been to turkey it's like <laughs> um no <laughs> How about Iran? Any ta- any family in Iran, like or Iran, like? Uh, we do the same thing at JFK. I you know it's like security. they ask you the most, yeah. like, where'd you go to yeshiva? No, but then they they look at you with like a regular face, like, did you pack a bomb? Like, don't well, think so, honey. They always <laughs> they always ask they always ask things. I like know that, it's just yeah. like they, it's so interesting. That's good security. Yeah, you know? but back back to Demar Hamlin. Um, and by the way, there there was a player also. Uh, his name was Alexei Cherpanov. He was the New York Rangers' uh, first overall, I think, or he was a first draft pick, uh, and uh, from Russia. And he passed away on the bench. He had an aneurysm. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh-huh. Was so a, sports is. I mean, there like was a, there was a there was a football player who passed away a few years ago. A few years ago. Yep. You want to look it up? Detroit. Uh, he was on the Detroit. Um, 
What's Detroit's name? Lions. Detroit Lions. Come on, Ava. Yeah, yeah. On the field. On the field. No, I don't think so. Uh, we'll check it out. We'll check it out. And uh, womp womp there a, womp. There was an umpire. I don't know. Yesterday or two days was, ago. No, an umpire hurt. It was an anniversary of his death yesterday or the day before. No, that, that he had a heart attack during John the game. John McSherry. He was fifty-one years old. Yeah, and uh, he had a heart attack on the field. But but you know we're wishing Demar and his family well. Hopefully he can make a full recovery and and he can get back out there. And honestly, for the people who had to experience seeing that, being at that game was. It's rough, and and being a teammate and Drama, seeing that traumatic. up close, seeing CPR yeah. being performed in the field, it's a traumatic, traumatic thing. And here's our fact checked. A few years ago, right? a few years yeah. ago, yeah, he said a few years. 1971 is, is 1971 a few years ago? What's, what's the guy's name? Chuck Hughes. Oh, he died on the Lions, and he passed away in, on the field. 1971. Ah, but it's 2023. Seems like yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> well, may his soul uh, really 71. May, may his soul ascend. <laughs> really, 1971. Okay. Is that what's going to happen to me when it's like 2050? Am I going to be like yesterday in 2022? Listen, uh, you know, l- let me tell you something about that, okay? Uh, time. You know, what's that? Could we, could, we, could we just show a clip of uh, Kamala, Kamala here? No, let the me passage talk. of time. Let me, let me. I'm talking about the significance of the passage of time, right? The significance of the passage of time. So when you think about it, there is great significance to the passage of time. Let, let, me, let me tell you something. <laughs> it passes. Well, hello, hello, knock, knock. When, when, you, when you take a history course in college, yeah. you take a history course in college, they'll talk to you about something that happened. Five, they'll say to you, oh, that happened in the 1500s or the 1600s. Yeah, yeah, right. It's like 100 years. 100 years here and 100 there. 100 year margin. So that's the answer to your question. 100 years here or there is not a big deal. You're pretty, yeah, you're like 70 years off though. All right, so uh, listen. 1971 was how long ago? 50 years ago? 52 years ago? You said a few weeks ago. I didn't say a few weeks ago. You said a few years ago. I said that is a few years ago. A few is not 50 years. A few is like three. It's a lot of few. It's it's like a lot of fuse. Okay. I thought it was later than that. There's no one no one else after that? No. I thought it was like in the 90s. I'll tell you I'll tell you something very interesting about last night. You know, you have to, you have to look beyond the main story of what happened obviously, but then you have you have the analysts, you have the members of ESPN, and now they're met with this awful crisis, and they have to stay on air. And they, they have millions of people watching, and, and as the seconds go by, more and more people tuning in, they're not getting any information. They, they, they are just as distraught as anyone in that crowd seeing what happened, and they have to report in, lo- in real time. And you know what people on people took to Twitter to criticize uh, oh, Susie Twitter, Susie uh, I don't know her name Susie something from on the, the field, ESPN on the field yeah and who was saying who was saying things and you know what Skip Bayless his career his career might be over what he does while this while this guy is in the ambulance Skip Bayless is like I don't know how they can postpone this game when are they going to make up this game the playoffs oh. are in a few weeks yeah. like and that's I'm, a guy I didn't know what to talk about. Listen, I, yeah, someone I, wrote. I remember, you know what? Sometimes, sometimes the right thing is to just not tweet. <laughs> I remember. I remember there was a a, a World Series game in San Francisco. There when was there's an earthquake, an earthquake in the yeah. game. So I mean, what do you say about that? Gee, they started playing. After I wonder that, when though. the stadium's going to stop shaking. Did they, did they start playing though? I don't. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. You know, there's there's a, there's you can't exactly uh, um, Predict, evacuate yeah. a seventy thousand person arena. Not not in an orderly in, fashion. In five minutes, you know, in an emergency situation. Although there was no reason to do that last night, uh, but um, you know, they did. They did. Um, they did. His family was there, and they were able to get his family from the stands into the ambulance to go to the hospital with him. Uh-huh. Um, All right. So by scared. tomorrow, hopefully, we'll have a, we'll have an update. Hopefully, 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 condition. we hear he's that he's a young condition. guy. He's a young, healthy guy. Otherwise. It was you know, a, yeah. a, a freak accident. And you know really. what? It's, it's an, a, a takeaway. And an important takeaway is the importance of if everyone really needs to know CPR. Because every second, every minute matters. When someone, if their, their heart stops beating, the, the quicker that someone is there to perform those life-saving measures. Well, you got great medical teams you, on these fields. Yeah, old old you know, sports games. You know what? He was in the best possible place for this to happen. Right. Because you had highly trained doctors there. They had an AED. They had CPR performed. And I think if you're watching this, go take a CPR course. Learn how to fi- learn learn how to use an AED because y- that can save a life. So you know what you need. First of all, I know what they do. They go to the sometimes when they think they suspect someone has a concussion, they take them into a tent. The thing, yeah, they, they, they're, not, they're not watching Coco Melon. They're, they're doing. doing <laughs> they're doing. <laughs> right, well, if they weren't watching Coco Melon, why would they need a tent? 
<laughs> they're doing they're doing concussion tests. Listen, the but you know what? You have to have you have to have neurologists. You have to have orthopedists. You have to no, have they, cardiologists. They, they do a field all test. These they, it's like a field sobriety test. They want to see can the guy follow? Could he? Are his pupils dilating? Or can he follow the finger? You know. Not, what do you think they're doing in that blue tent? I have no idea. Kicking a bag, eating a hot dog? What doing. Obviously, whatever they were doing, they didn't want anybody to see. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting, yeah. by the way, injuries in sports. You know, uh, you see a lot of times, like take Mike White, for example, on the Jets. You know, he got his ribs broken mid-game, and he ended up finishing the game, and then he was out for two weeks. Is that why like, he was so bad this past Sunday? Ooh, burn. Uh, but how does, how, does, how does a doctor let him go back into the game, and then he's out for two weeks? It's just like... People have people they, have a lot they, of tinnitus on they, professional sports for this reason. They taped them up. I know, but they they feel like they don't take care of the athletes. But, but these guys they're motivated to play because they have a very small window of opportunity to make big money. They don't want to get hurt. You know, it's either they're going to make the money in these four or five years in their career, or they're going to be working for the TSA in an airport in Oklahoma. You know, <laughs> taking out shoes from bus boxes. All right, what else you want to discuss? Is that um, it? Yeah, I mean, it's it's Where's a new year. Phone? It's Janet. Your phone's gone. It's January twenty. It's January twenty twenty three. It's an, it's a it's a brand new year. It's a new year. I always looked at New Year's as turning the corner. Yeah, what corner? I don't know. Towards spring. Towards springtime. Yeah. Towards spring and summer. That'd be nice. It's a rainy day here in New York today. It's it gray and, and wet, but um, you know, before you know, it's going to be uh, schools are going to be out for intercession. Oof. Then we're going to start uh, seeing. Then we're going to start talking about people going on extravagant vacations. You're going to start talking about Purim pretty soon. Ooh, When's Purim excited. this year? Um, it's going to be in March, no? March, March 4th. 4th. Uh-huh. That's, uh huh. That's that's uh, that's pretty soon. And then before you know it, you'll you'll be uh, be buying shmermat, so. Oh my gosh! Okay, that's too much for me to handle already. Um, Asar Bateves. It's 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 a it's a day that the Nebuchadnezzar. Um, you know, began as assault, began as on, siege, as assault on Yerushalayim. Those walls are something else. I always marvel at the walls surrounding Yerushalayim and how they were built. And I, I even took a tour this time uh, underneath the walls. Really, the tunnel Yerushalayim. tours, yeah, tunnel tours. I took this. You, time. you took it with us. It's not your first time. Um, th we but did, this was this was different. Went. This was a different tour. It shows you that how deep, how deep so it goes down. For those who want to make today somewhat meaningful. On meaningfulminute.org, there's a free film that we that we created and we streamed on Shabbos Pratamas, but it's still relevant for a day like today, where they go, uh, Rabbi Yaakov Klein, or VTL Goldwith, and or Shlomo Katz, they go to the, the to the site uh -huh. where some of these stones were toppled over and are still there, and and they speak about that. So meaningfulminute.org, you can find it in the film section. It's uh, Morning with Hope. You can check that out if you want to make today a little more meaningful. But yeah, the you know you go to the you go to the coast cell and you you, you touch this wall and you're like. How how is this built? How they, <laughs> like, they get those stones up there? And then and how do they get it down? They have a video illustration, you know, uh, animated about how they believe it was built. You know, didn't have the kind of heavy lifting. They don't have material. Cr they didn't have cranes. They had a they had a pulley. They had whatever was uh, advanced technology in in those days. Didn't have electronics. Yeah, uh, but they 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 got the uh, the managed lift up there with a lot of manpower. Well, Amir Tashem, this will be the last Asar Bateves that we observe. Mishak right. should be here in just a couple of minutes. Um, and uh, and next, uh, by next Asar Bateves, we'll all be on uh, Harabayas with, yeah, uh, with Itamar Ben-Gvir. With ben -Gvir and, and Rav Yosef. And his family, and there'll be enough room for everybody. And uh, we're waiting for those days, those, those days where miracles are going to be a matter of a daily routine. Absolutely. Well, that's our episode for today. Make sure to please subscribe to this channel on YouTube or Spotify or Apple or wherever you're listening. Leave a rating, leave a review. Um, and if you haven't already, I don't know why you haven't, but I'm just going to say, make sure to sign up to the Daily Thread on WhatsApp. You get the link in the description in the show notes uh, and hit that link, sign up to our WhatsApp status because we're going to give away a million dollars in a few weeks on there. Ooh. I'm kidding. But you never know. We have a lot of new content coming out and a lot of new projects. And you'll be the first one to see it. Follow us on WhatsApp and have an awesome day.